a little bit uh, earlier. Yeah, he plays Pikachu in this game, and well, you made top eight, so that must mean you're a very strong Pikachu player. Uh, here we go, Diddy Kong versus Pikachu. And if you're familiar with Diddy Kong Smash 4, he's a very different character in this game. But one thing that he has that is different is he has two bananas. They do not disappear based on uses. They disappear based on time on the ground, not even in the air. Yeah. But more importantly, they have transcendent priority. They beat every attack in the game. Yep. So basically what we're saying is Diddy Kong is a very good character. A very good character. But, you know, Pikachu, definitely a great character in his own right. 59 to 9% right now. Gunner Maniac is doing a great job of dealing with these bananas. Mm -hmm. Now, so far in the neutral, like, this is kind of Diddy's bread and butter. Like, he'll get his bananas out. He'll uh, glide toss them. He'll dash attack every once in a while. He'll, then he'll get a grab, chuck you off stage, pull his bananas, and there we go. Reset the situation. It's kind of like a slow vortex that uh, very few characters are equipped to get out of. Pikachu, though, can find his way around them with his uh, quick attack just to reposition himself so quickly that Diddy doesn't have time to set the stage for him. Yep. And then something else that, you know, player one does have at his disposal is you can chain grab across the stage essentially with bananas. Um, and there is an infinite, even though it's very technical, and I'm not sure if we're going to see that setup come into play today. Yeah, you know, I think about that a lot. Like, Diddy had a functional infinite in this game that most people just didn't bother to learn, so he never became broken. Like, what? This character can, like, kill you if, with two bananas. We knew what it would do to the game, and we didn't want that to happen. You guys are welcome. But you allowed Meta Knight. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not my valid. rule set. <laughs> valid. That's valid. <laughs> um, but 128 to 127, both these characters pretty much in kill range right now. If a smash attack from either of them does connect, blood will be drawn, and blood is drawn. Banana and two down smash. Did that start off with a trip? Nah, he threw a banana at him. Okay. Yeah. So he had a little bit of charge on that too, just to guarantee it. And now uh, Gunner Maniac's not in the best position. Two bananas on the field, and you have, um, oh no. That actually alleviated so much pressure. That one random trip. Yeah, there's a lot of momentum going into play right there. Was looking great for player one, but he's not letting it slow him up by any means. This man is still chasing him down. Bananas all around, monkey kick flips as well, and even a dash attack. Nice. I actually didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I was going to say one thing about player one is he's a very technical player when it comes to movement. He does it in Smash 4, and he does it in Brawl. And even that little platform cancel, B reverse, banana pull was uh, just him demonstrating, hey, I have tech, even if I don't need it in every scenario. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? Gunner Maniac's like, who needs tech when I have a neutral air, and you are in a compromising position? Finally takes that first stock. And the stock counts are even. Pikachu actually does have some pretty strong uh, early percent strings. Um, you know, not quite as strong as his Smash 4 iteration, but. It's still very doable. Excellent DI, though, from Gunner Maniac, going straight up. But player one, a little bit slow off the block on that trip. And now um, Gunner Maniac's going to be staying alive just a little bit longer. On borrow time, though. Yeah, it's only a matter of time until player one finds his opening. Unless Gunner Maniac just becomes a maniac and just his play becomes super, super stellar. Oh, this could have been a setup. No, not able to punish that kick flip afterwards. But be a stop. Yeah. you will get punished for missing that down smash. You know, when you hit a character with an item in their hand, they can almost punish you every time because there's no shield drop frames when you're throwing an item. It's one of the few things in the game that cancel your shield drop frames. Yep. Absolutely. And especially, like, Pikachu down smash is one of the more punishable moves in this game. With a unique animation and, like, a unique shield stun, you know that you're going to be eating a big punish after that. Player one, keeping it slow and steady. It's on Gunner Maniac to approach. I like how he's playing right now. Like, he's not approaching foolishly. But it also, like, when player one gets in, he makes just more off of it. And that's why he has a stock lead and a percent lead right now. Or soon to be percent lead, probably. Yeah, it's pretty much a stock lead right there. I like that jab right there. He says, hey, I can't get much more off of it, but I'll take the quick 2%. Every advantage counts right now. Yeah. Burning his double jump. Gunner Maniac's going to be put in an awkward position, but no punish by player one. Yeah, rare miss right there by him. That forward smash is going to put player one back off the stage. Oh, He's going to go back. He makes it back. Very fortunate for him. I thought Gunner Maniac was going to take advantage of that situation. And we saw him actually go for a lock attempt right there. Pikachu can lock you as well with the Thunder Draw. And 
in this particular game, you can do it as long as it continues. Oh, we almost had it. Almost had it. With that roll in, actually, you would have had both bananas, and that could have been hurt for Gunner Maniac. But dropping the input, luckily. But still, this is very rough for him. Look at all the momentum that player one has. Everything that Gunner Maniac does is getting called out. And also, you have two bananas on stage, too. A little late on that down smash. Also, something else. A lot of Diddy's like the matchup versus Pikachu, but Pikachu has one of the worst animations when it comes to getting crimped. Oh! Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Player one. Talk about awareness. There was no way that was potential. It goes in a random direction, right? Hey, man, did that look random to you? It was, I mean, it looked calculated. That's why I'm actually kind of worried. That was wild. Player one taking game one off a of fluke, off an of outplay. Whatever happened, that was, I mean, I great like play to for call him. it genius. Yeah, genius is a good word for it. But yeah, Pikachu has a very slow animation when uh, Pikachu trips, so it's a lot easier for Diddy Kong to combo Pikachu off of uh, tripping him with a banana. Yeah, animations actually matter a lot in this game. It's weird how like this game is shaped by just what one animator or one side of the team decided to do for this character. But this time, Gunner Maniac doing a better job keeping pace at the early percent. Nice grab by player one, though, throwing the banana down just to uh, kind of juke him a little bit. And it, it looks like uh, player one is always going to get out of that down smash. We have not seen it ever connect fully. Courtesy of I believe player one's phenomenal SDIs. Yeah. I think it's like kind of like classically conditioned that whenever someone hears like the sound bite of Pikachu and down smash, they just mash up on the uh, C stick and the directional stick. Nice pace by player one, finding a forward smash off of that. And Gunner started off well just like last game, but it looks like he can't get the last hit. And player one just slowly but surely racks up the damage. And right now, Gunner Maniac is in the kill range because of it. Yeah, but I like that forward air to grab, throwing him off stage. That's his banana now, and wow, not getting the lingering hitbox of the neutral air that he needs. Now Gunner Maniac's in off position. Nice roll off the ledge, but still saying they're just barely enough to make it back on stage. Whoa. Hit him scary. with the banana, but it was in the air, wasn't able to get the kill off of it, and comes up with an up air, and Gunner Maniac drops stock number one. Yeah, player one throws bananas up to just try and keep them on stage as much as possible. Gives Gunner Maniac something to respect, um, even though he has invincibility coming down that death platform. And look at that, it pays off. He's getting so much mileage off the banana. Ooh, nice tech. we got techs out here. Excellent tech coming from player one. Still alive, he indeed is. And Gunner's trying to get the edge guards, but just player one between having the tech, between just being so evasive is making it so difficult. Okay, nice reversal from player one. Gunner Maniac is doing, I think he's doing so much better this game, but I think player one is just like adapting just enough to keep this lead like uh, solid. I'm going for a hard read, but player one doesn't give him any roll to work with. Player one setting the bananas up again. Actually managed to get a trip off of that down tilt in the four day. You guys thought it was only in one game? Nah, it's in multiple. You can't escape this nightmare. <laughs> the small chimpanzee has been terrorizing people for 10 years. You ever think about that? This is a long time. So is Fox. <laughs> I mean, Fox isn't as like extreme in this game, but Fox, yeah, and Melee especially. Yeah, he's been actually terrorizing people for like 18 years, or 16 years, I can't do math. That came out so quick, the banana, the down smash. You could tell that player one was fully aware that was gonna connect, very confident in his reads. Yeah, sour spot in there, not gonna find a kill though. Oh no, he's dead. He overcommitted just enough. Oh man, and if he was preemptively mashing, he might have been able to get out of that. But there's no way, you don't expect someone to do that. And then if you match, you have to worry about hitting a button when you break out and possibly, you know, self-destructing. Yeah. But um, cover your three stock, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, very unfortunate to be on the other end of that, but I'm sure player one is feeling great right now. And surprisingly enough, player one actually taking a lead. If history, you know, history is saying that Gunner Maniac starts off stronger, but when player one's starting off stronger, you know, that has to be so scary. Yeah, that really doesn't bode well at all. 
Granted, that this is the first time we see Gunner Maniac going an actual counter pick rather than just going Smashville. Um, like Pokemon Stadium, I guess he might be looking for the two consistent platforms to get him out of dodge with those bananas. And also the edges, maybe. It's a bit harder for um, Diddy Kong to recover onto those edges. That is true. They have that small lip there that's hard for players to see and count for sometimes. Or maybe it was things like this. Oh, yeah, but also they can get turned against you. If you add up another banana there, he can literally just stand there and press the A button, and the banana will always fall in the perfect position. And he says, I had enough of this. This is not working out for me. Yeah, but now he has to fight his back foot a little bit. And if there's anything that Gunner Maniac does, well, I think it's that. I don't think he's afraid of being at the ledge, but I think player one is making him consider being afraid at the ledge. And player one is just chasing him down. He says, I don't care. Wherever you go, I will go too. Yeah, just keep him with him step for step. Now, granted, Gunner, you know, has been playing from behind. He's definitely kept it close. Oh, my God, oh, I was going to say. And things are looking better for him. But that forward smash setup was just too difficult to avoid. And player one drawing for his blood, which he's done every single round of this set. Yeah, if that uh, tone holds true, this could be a 3-0 unless Gunner Maniac starts to dig deep. And there we go, perfectly executed. That jab causing a little trip. And uh, recognizing that, going for the forward smash, or up smash rather, and taking it off the top. Good setup right oh. there. Oh, he was a little too late, not spaced perfectly. Very fortunate player one though, who would have been off stage and potentially in a game setup. Yeah, as strong as, oh no, don't get by that. Okay, good. But as strong as a game, as strong of a character as Diddy Kong is, one of his weaknesses is his recovery. It is linear, and also the uh, barrels can, uh, you can knock him out of it, and he's fogged to his death if you hit him with a weak hit. Same as in Smash 4. It does look like, you know, Gunner Maniac does have really good uh, item control, and that is one thing that's good. That's one thing keeping him in this match and keeping it competitive. Even if he does not win, it's not going to, player one's not able to just completely walk over because of it. Yeah, you need everything that you can get right now, though. And uh, Gunner Maniac tries to swing the fence with that forest smash. I like the idea. He had the read, but space would roll off. Here comes player one, though. Not a whole lot of percent on him yet, so he's just keeping his bananas in check. I like that. Tries to go for the RNG kill again. If he's RNG, when you have consistent confirms, Glad toss that banana straight through, hits him with the forest smash. Final stock, potentially, for Gunner Maniac. Maniac still fighting though, and he does actually have Diddy Kong at kill range. Can he get an edge guard? Oh, Lingering. that is a no. And we have last stock 0% each right now. Gunner Maniac still showing he has plenty of fight left. Yeah, excellent kill setup by him. Staying all the way out there, forcing Diddy to go through his zone, which very few people can make it through. Quick attacking over the banana on the ground, keeping one in his control at all times. Gunner Maniac is forcing player one to play with a little bit less resources and really testing him on the metal of his new tool. We're going to see if player one's going to go up there, if he's just going to chill. He says, I want some. It's not worth it, man. Just go back. It's really not. Pikachu has those thunder results that will just cover so much space. Oh, but player one cheaply sneaking through there and still getting some hits, too. <laughs> he got his hits and left. And then he's like, actually, I'm coming back again. So decisive. Are you in? Are you out? What are you doing? I think Gunner Maniac knows what he's doing. He is out. He's not trying to take that fight. And you know, player one chasing him down really tells you how this match has been going. It really tells the story. It's essentially been player one just kind of chasing Gunner Maniac and just being right time and time again. Gunner Maniac is definitely holding up his own, but the pace is really being dictated by player one. And I think Gunner Maniac needs to slow down this pace. Make player one start guessing himself if he wants to keep himself in this. Nice catch, though. And now he's willing to go for more forward smash reads, and that might be the difference maker. Go and slip on the banana again to get out of the grasp of the monkey. Another forward smash read attempt, but look at that. Player one's starting to respect him now, and now the pace of the match is changing. Gunner Maniac starting to trust himself a little bit more, but could it be too little too late? We'll find out soon. We're reaching the end of this game, potentially the end of this set. And uh, Gunner Maniac on the left side. The transformation kicks in. Now player one has to play around the windmill. Oh, oh my oh. god! But he used it to his advantage, poking through the bottom. And player one is going to move through 3-0 off a creative play.
Player one has so many tricks up his sleeve. The thunder jolt into the up B to kill him. And that one right there, that was not RNG. That, that was, was just genius. Yeah, premeditated second degree murder. I mean, someone call the police because player one is on the run, and that run through bracket is going to keep on going tomorrow. Wow. Um, I believe Brawl starts at 2 p.m. I would have to look, um, but we t I believe it's something around that time yeah. um, where top six will be happening. Res 11 Tantalus will be bringing you guys home. We definitely appreciate all the viewers that are at home. Obviously, we would not be here without you guys. Pat yourselves on the back. Definitely appreciate it. Um, and on that note, I'm Logic. I'm J-Dog. We're signing out. Yep, that'll be it for us today. See you tomorrow.